Hello friendos. As you can tell, I bought some books and I would like to talk about them. Normally I don't film book hauls because I feel very frustrated with the fact that I just have to hold a book up and then say I bought it, I don't know much about the plot, but I'm very excited to read it. I don't, but I don't know. This time I bought some books used and I went to a used English bookstore and I live in Poland, in Warsaw, so there's not a lot of bookstores like that and I think I have some good finds, so I wanted to share with you. I'm not sure if you can see, oh no. Okay, so here I have a pile of new books that I bought and here is a pile of books that I bought used. This is a collective book haul, so I bought those books in a span of like two, three months. And interestingly, I don't think I talked about any of those in any of my videos yet, so that's exciting. What should I go for? Okay, so let's start with some new books. I have Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. Oh, it's so weird so, to say her name like that. Because like in Korean, the surname is first, so it would be Lee Min Jin. But yeah, Min Jin Lee. <laughs> this is a historical fiction that's very popular, you probably heard about it. It's set in Korea, and I do think it's kind of like multi-generational saga. It's about this young woman who gets pregnant, uh, but the man who she's in love with, there's some drama there, I'm not sure what happens, but she ends up marrying this like Japanese minister who's in Korea at the time, and yeah, she marries him and moves to Japan. And Korea's and Japan's relationship, like historically speaking, was always rather tense, to say the least. So I'm very excited to read this one. We have a book that you might be surprised to see in my list of books that I bought. But we have In the Woods by Tana French. This is a mystery, I would say. There are two reasons why I bought this book. Oh, I forgot to say. I, even though most of the time I don't know the plot of the books that I buy, or I don't know how to talk about the plot, even if I heard something about uh, the plot, I find it hard to talk about it if I haven't read the book. I talk about it in my Isaac and Booktube video. If you want some more of my thoughts on that, head over there. But yeah, even if I don't know the plot necessarily, I will tell you why I bought the book. So we have Ten of French in the Woods. I bought it because of like two reasons. One, I did see this in like... I don't know if this book is like in particular, but I saw Ten of French just books on like lists of books that could be categorized as literally li literary mysteries so that made me excited and the second reason why I bought this book is because this is a series and the second book is called The Unlikeness I could be wrong and that book actually was on the list of books that would be considered uh, like Dark Academia. I saw that book on those kind of lists like years ago before like Dark Academia was like a big thing on booktube and like in the book world. But it's the second book in this series so I was like I have to read the first one. I don't know anything about the plot but I'm excited. Also it's so much longer than I anticipated. Over, It's almost 600 pages long. What? Then we have Hardback, which like is unheard of on this channel, but <laughs> I bought The Transition Baby by Tori Peters. I don't think I want to talk about the plot because like I've heard some things about the plot, but I don't want to get it wrong. But I bought it because it was on the short list of Women's Prize for Fiction. And I do know it's a kind of story about trans person who detransitioned, and I do know that Tori is actually also transgender, so Oh, it's pink. It's pretty. Would you be shocked if I told you that I'm excited to read this? <laughs> then we have some non-fiction, which I don't know if you are interested in, but I will probably put like some timestamps in the description, so maybe you can skip, skip ahead if you don't care. First we have The Collective Schizophrenia by Esme Wei Jun Wang, uh, and this is a collection of essays that talk about schizophrenia and like the author's kind of struggle or like journey to get the diagnosis and if you're subscribed to this channel, by the way, I, I am like a few subscribers away from a thousand subscribers, so if you're watching this and you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Oh, I hated that. <laughs> I never say like at the end of my videos like, like and subscribe because I find it very awkward, but the same I would appreciate very much if you subscribed. <laughs> what was I talking about? Oh yeah, if you are subscribed to my channel, you know that I'm very interested in like mental illness 
mental health so this is something that I wanted to buy for quite a long time and and I genuinely can't wait to read this I think I will read this maybe during nonfiction number November yeah I, I definitely will get to this soon then we have another collection of essays I don't normally buy collections of essays, but I have a very specific reason why I bought this. So we have A Supposedly Fun Thing I'll Never Do Again by David Forster Wallace. I bought this book because of an interview with Bob Burnham. If I can find this interview, it was with some journalist and it was a very interesting interview. He talked about one of the essays in this book. I will get this wrong probably because the title of the essay, I think it's in Latin, A Unibus Pluram television and US fiction. I watched, obviously, like everyone else on this planet, I watched Bob Burnham's special on Netflix called Insight and I really loved it. And I am someone who has a very obsessive personality about like things that I like. So I went on this like journey of like watching every single interview with Bob Burnham and he talks about this essay. There's that. And lastly, we have The Age of Surveillance Capitalism, The Fight for a Human Future, at the New Frontier of Power by Shoshana Tsuboff. I don't have enough brain cells to talk about this book. I'll, normally I don't read out like premises of books, but with this one I don't think I can tell you what it's about. The only... okay, why about this book? I heard about it when I was at university. What class was this? I mean, I know what class it was, but like I don't know... what was it called? I don't remember. Okay, Wikipedia is telling me that this book looked at the development of digital companies like Google and Amazon and suggests that their business models represent a new form of capitalist accumulation that she calls surveillance capitalism. Still gets a Cyber sociology? That sounds wrong. Digital sociology, oh my god, I'm an idiot. Yeah, that was the class. It was a very interesting class and we talked a little bit about this. There's that. Uh, and lastly, when it comes to new books, we have a classic. We have Madonna in a Fur Coat by Sabahdin Ali. I am so sorry if I mispronounced it. So, I heard about this book from Claire Clementine. I'm not sure if she still like does booktube, but I will link her channel in the description. I don't know, the way she talked about it, I just immediately was like, I am interested. This is supposedly like a very famous Turkish love story and it takes place in 1920s Berlin. A Turkish man falls in love with an artist. Yeah, there's that. Don't know anything else about it. It's very short. How many pages is it? like 150 pages, shouldn't take long to read it. And now let's get to the used books. Okay, there's one book that is used but I didn't buy it in that used like bookstore with English books. Uh, I just bought it online and that is The Custom of the Country by Edith Wharton. I love Edith Wharton, I read Summer and the Age of... no, I didn't read The Age of the Innocence and The House of Murph. I really enjoyed both of those, so I would like to read everything Eddie Fortin has ever written. So even though I don't know anything about the plot of this book, I bought it. I bought it used and you can tell that it's used. Not sure if you can see, but this is a little bit destroyed and here it's bent uh, and here it's bent a little bit. But, oh wait, I have to go back. Oh, I can't see anything. <laughs> I hope I'm not blurry, but I really don't mind, uh, it's the inside that counts. But I recently, like a month ago, uh, watched the adaptation of The House of Murph and I didn't love it, but I also heard that the adaptation of the, can cast of the, the custom of the country is actually really good, so I'm really excited to get to this one. And now let's get to the books that I bought in this bookstore. First we have historical fiction, we have The Little Stranger by Sarah Waters. I love Sarah Waters, I read two books by her and both of them I gave five stars to. I read Tipping the Velvet and... Hmm. Fingersmith. She writes amazing historical fiction, so well researched, so well written. This one I think is about a doctor who visits this family who live in this like grand mansion, but it's like falling apart because like they used to be rich but now they're poor. And I do think it talks about class and like social changes in the beginning of the 20th century, you wanna say? So, 
and it sounds very interesting to me. I do think it's actually a ghost story. Uh, I think April from Getting Higgy With It absolutely loved this book, but she said it was very scary. So maybe I will read it around Halloween. Did I say Halloween weird? Halloween? Halloween? I don't know. I wanted to say something else about this book, but now I don't remember. Oh, I know. I... Here's the thing, I read Fingersmith and Tipping the Velvet and those two are known to be like kind of best books by Sarah Waters so I'm kind of reaching the territory where I'm a little bit worried uh, if I will like her other books because they, like even on Goodreads, their like average rating isn't as high as the two other books so we'll see. Uh, we have a book that I'm not sure how to categorize. Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clark. who coincidentally yesterday won the Woman's Prize for Fiction with Piranesi. So, good for her. I kind of, like, even though I didn't read Piranesi and I don't think I will, uh, when I watched her speech I tore that up a little bit. <laughs> so, this book, I was on defense whether I wanted to read this book or not for quite some time because, I mean, first of all, it is over a thousand pages long. It's like a thousand and six pages long and I don't know if it's like magic or magical realism but it's a commitment okay it's a brick of a book and some people love it some people hate it so when I saw this book in this used bookstore I've decided to kind of read a few sentences here and there to figure out if I like the writing style and as you can tell because I bought this book I did so I don't know when I will read it but the writing style is very important to me, so just the fact that I enjoy the writing style is promising. <laughs> okay, so we have a play, An Inspector Calls by J.B. Princely. Uh, this is a play, I actually started it yesterday, <laughs> but I got distracted and did not finish it, so I started Act 2. And this, I know it's a mystery, it kind of gives me like Agatha Christie vibes because there's this girl that gets murdered and like an inspector goes to this rich family's house and talks to each member of the family. I think I will tell you, that's everything I will tell you. Yeah, because obviously everybody has secrets. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how it will end and like wrap up so I can tell you. Maybe uh, if I finish it um, before I put this up I'll put on the screen like the rating or like whether I like this book or not. But like so far I, I'm really enjoying it. There's that. We have two classics. One classic that actually I read uh, already. Mansfield Park by <laughs> Jane Austen. So, the reason why I bought this book, if you saw my uh, classics collection video that I will link in the description or like, you know, in the cards or whatever, you know that I actually have both a Polish edition of this book uh, and an English one, so you're like, why do you need the third one? You didn't even like this one that much. So I gave my Mansfield Park three stars, but I kind of want to write a retelling, like a modern retelling of Mansfield Park, but where Fanny doesn't end up with Edmund, but with Henry Crawford, and Henry gets uh, the uh, redemption arc that he deserves, in my opinion. But like, it's not something I'm, I would like to write to publish it. I'm just treating it as kind of a writing exercise. So, the reason why I bought this one is because the, the other English edition is um, like an old Macmillan's Collector Library edition and it's like very small, there's not, like the margins are very small and uh, I would like to annotate it when I reread it, so I bought this one because it will be easier for me to annotate this one. There's that, <laughs> that's why I bought this one. And lastly we have He Knew He Was Right by Anthony Trollope. I bought this because I enjoy Anthony Trollope's books. <laughs> I mean, I read The Warden and currently I am reading Barchester Towers, which I'm not loving. There's so much church politics yet again. I was like, I thought we were done with it. But I still see like the brilliance of Anthony Trollope here and there. And I'm especially liking Barchester Towers when we're not talking about church politics. So I have no idea what this is about, but I really love this edition because it says Words Classics, so I'm assuming this is like an older edition of Oxford Words Classics. But first of all, the font is a lot different to what the font looks like currently. And also it's so floppy. It's such a big book and it's the floppiest book I've ever owned. I ever owned. Oh, I love it. Let me show you the font actually. The spacing uh, is not amazing, but I really like the font. Hold on. Not sure if you can see anything, but... Yeah, I really like the font itself and I like how big it is. Oh no, you can't see anything. <laughs> I'm blurry. 
sorry. Okay, so that was the last book. I'm sorry that I don't really know the plot of a lot of books, but I still hope this video was enjoyable. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye!